now 7 p.m. Monday, October 16, 2018. I call the selectmen's meeting to order in the Sutton Town Hall meeting room 1C. Would everyone rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next would be public forum, limited to five minutes per topic, discussion or comments about town employees or agency members shall be avoided so as not to violate individuals' rights. Anyone here for public forum? Next would be the minutes for the Board of Selectmen from October 1st, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes from our meeting on October 1st, 2018 as presented. Second. Well, a motion's been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And it would be three and then one abstain. One abstain. Next would be the first agenda item would be a public hearing at 179 8 Larch Road, the Cronin property under 61A. And Wendy, read the notice, please. Mr. Chairman, I need to step off as I'm going to butter. Okay. So do. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As posted in the September 6, 2018, Millbury Sutton Chronicle Notice of Public Hearing. <coughs> notice is hereby given that the Sutton Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing to discuss the town's options under Mass General Law, Chapter 61A, Section 14, Tuesday, October 16, 2018, at 7 p.m. The meeting will be held in the Sutton Town Hall regarding Chapter 61A property, which is located at 179 Eight Lots Road, Assessor's Map 28, Parcel 48. This lot is further identified as Lot 3, will have 2.81 plus or minus acres removed from Chapter 61A and sold. This meeting will be held on the third floor of the Sutton Municipal Center, 4 Uxbridge Road, Sutton Mass, 01590. The public is invited to attend this public hearing. Okay. And we have a representation from Cronin Property. Would you please identify yourself? Mel Chachoy on behalf of Mr. Cronin. Okay. So you want to talk a little bit about this and why we're here again? Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, so this is a lot Mr. Cronin owns. He's entered into a CNS agreement with a second buyer. Uh, I was here before the board on a previous occasion. That deal has fallen through. Uh, this is for lot three at 179 Eight Lots Road. The new buyer is a Mr. School, Ryan Schoolcraft. Uh, we have provided notice pursuant to Chapter 61A, Section 14 of my client's uh, intent to sell. Uh, and I'm before the board um, uh, hoping the board will not exercise actually the right to purchase the property and move forward. Okay. And yeah, we're not interested in this property again at this point in time. Okay. Uh, and I'll open it up for discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, actually, this is uh, going to be pretty straightforward because you've been before us yeah. and we've already discussed this lot. And as long as the town has no interest in uh, taking action on this, I, I see no really issue to contest this in any way, shape, or form. So I, I think I'm all set. I have no questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Wendy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Based on prior meetings, I, I have no further input. And, and I uh, can... I also uh, agree with my colleagues as long as police fire and highway has no issue, it's all continued from the other thing. Um, I would like to just move forward. And But before I do, is there any one from the uh, public that has any comment? Seeing none, I believe we have a motion. Mr. Close Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to close the public hearing. Yeah. And now we have Second. a motion. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Now, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion not to exercise the town's option under Mass General Law, Chapter 61A, for property located at 179 Eight Lots Road, Map 28, Parcel 48, approximately 2.81 acres. Okay. And seconded. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 3 0. Congratulations. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Next would be a public hearing on a poll hearing at Pleasant Valley Road. 
And National Grid, come forward, please, and identify yourself. You and then we'll read, the re read it for us. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. As posted in the September 27, 2018, Millbury Sutton Chronicle, public hearing notice. In accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 166, Section 22, you are hereby notified that a public hearing will be held at 7.10 p.m. on Tuesday, October 16, 2018, in the Sutton Town Hall upon petition from National Grid for permission to install three J.O. poles and one S.O. pole on Pleasant Valley Road beginning at a point approximately 855 feet southeast of the center line of the intersection of Old Worcester Road Extension and Boucher Road and continuing approximately 436 feet in a norther northerly direction. National Grid to install three new jointly owned poles, 9, 10, and 11, and one sole owned P984 stub pole with anchors on P984 and P11. Also for permission to lay and maintain underground laterals, cables, and wires in the above or intersecting public ways for the purpose of making connection with such poles and buildings as the petitioner desires for distributing <coughs> purposes. Plan filed herewith, mark number 26545061, and this has been approved by the Police, Fire, and Highway Departments of Sutton. And, and now, uh, sir, yeah, identify yourself. Um, I was reading that myself, and it's... Whoever typed this, was, there was one incorrect piece in there. Oh, please. It's actually that. 800 feet uh, southeast of Boston Road and Pleasant Valley Road. So you know where Route 146 is. You know where the mall is, where they're installing, they're putting the, the five-unit uh, retail store and the new restaurant. Yes. It's right there. So I'll, I'll have them fix that for you. But it actually states, it should state 800 feet southwest of the center line of Boston Road and the, the intersection of Boston Road and Pleasant Valley Road. So I'll fix, I'll have that fixed for you guys so you'll have that, but I just, that, that that's not even the right town. You know what I mean? I think Boucher Road's in Charlton, so. So was this how it was published in the Chronicle? Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, we're gonna have The issues. map is correct, but you know, I think that the, 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 um, the information, it says right on it, it says be, um, three, uh, on Pleasant Valley Road, beginning at a point, I don't know who put this in here, but I um I didn't put this in there because my my sketch actually shows where it's supposed to. So wherever they it, it shows the poles on the right street when you when when we're asking for it. But the when they start doing the I like the legal <coughs> description to be a little more specific when we ask for a uh, petition. We want at least know, let you guys know that that's where we are. But that's the only thing that's different. You, the, the the ad states correctly on Pleasant Valley Road, but I don't know about as far as the intersections part. That's where I begin my, that's where I begin my design. Mr. Chairman, may I ask, was the map included in the? Yes. Publication. Oh, I, on the public, I, don't, I doubt that. So no. then the publication's incorrect. It has a different town's address. Does it have a different town's address? Well, well, well the actual polls it states the correct street. In Pleasant Valley Road. It just, it, but, I, but my legal part of it that for you. When you give us the, the, the petition rights, mm -hmm. that's incorrect. But the, the poles are on the right street. As you state in the ad, it says three poles and one sole owned pole on Pleasant Valley Road. So that's where the poles are going. It's just that when I, when I begin my design, mm -hmm. we have to begin it at an intersection point, get to that spot where we want to put the first pole, and then continue from there. So that's, that's what's incorrect. If we were to vote on this as drafted in the, in the public notice, how would that impact things going forward? Well, I would imagine that potentially could open up if there's any type of issue that would emerge. So is, is there a way that we can, um, although I suppose we can't amend right. the, the public I notice. Say one thing. There are no buttons here. <laughs> there's just the gas station. So the gas station is, Pleasant Valley Road is just, it's, it's, there's nothing there. You know, you know what I'm saying? So there's not even, a, there's not even any neighbors. So, and the only neighbors that would even be close are the ones that are already in the mall. And that one gas station, that's it. So I don't know whatever you, you know. So. Did any mailings go out to any yeah. abutters? Yes, the abutters were notified. How many were there? Yeah, can you answer that? Yeah. Four. Four? And there's been no response? No. Is there a way that we could 
amend the motion so that way we could put the contingency of correction into the public record before it's filed? Or should we postpone? My feeling is that we didn't give proper notice. I mean, the, I understand Pleasant Valley Road is correct, but the intersection doesn't exist in Sutton. Mm -hmm. I was going to bring that issue up that is, you know, puzzling. Where is Boucher Road? Yeah, same yeah. yeah, I know. He must have gotten confused with another job. Yeah, I, I, I think it's appropriate think for, the for the board thing, to postpone, postpone and yeah. we'll um, re-advertise and let yeah. the public know exactly what's going on. I think it, yeah, that, that uh, way it's, it's really it's our responsibility. Correct. I apologize for this because uh, we shouldn't have gone forward not knowing where the roads were. But anyway, um, so I, I think a motion to postpone and to reconsider at a later date once it's properly advertised. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to propose, uh, postpone the public hearing on this matter. Second. Uh, motion remains second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. Thank you. Sorry. I apologize too. Yeah. I, uh, I should have read this myself. Mm -hmm. well, at least you caught it, though. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'm not going to lie to you. You guys were pretty good to us, so we appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All right, folks. I guess I'll see you in a month. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Next would be the Cultural Council appointments. Jim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tonight, we're, we would like to appoint two members to the town's cultural council uh, under Mass General Law Chapter 10, Section uh, 58. The recommended uh, appointments are Norma Baker of 10 Burbank Rain Road and Christine uh, Bouvet of 34 Armsby Road. Uh, both of these individuals will serve a three-year term. Um, it's up to you. I'll open up for discussion. You want to have a moment? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm Open sorry. Yeah. Would you ladies please come up and identify yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself and why you want this position? Um, I'm Norma Baker. You know me forever. Okay, um, just, no, just want to make sure you speak into the mic. You've got to come up close to the mic so that we can the go The wireless don't pick up that well. Okay. Um, I, I had done it before. I knew they were really shorthanded, and so I just thought it would, you know, save duty and all that community service. So, and I think the cultural council, I think what they do is awesome. So, all for the community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And identify yourself, please. I'm Christine Bove. Yeah. And um, I moved to start something when I was Sutton a little over 40 years ago, and I've been looking for an opportunity to um, contribute to the community. Um, and I read this in the newspaper that they were looking for members for this, and I thought it would be a good match. Um, in the previous life, I was in human resources. I'm retired now, and I determined that I do this a job and volunteer with what I've learned from the group. So I think it would be nice. Hopefully, it helps us all. Sure. Okay. And I'll open it up to the board for questions. Jesse. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I really don't have any questions. I just want to thank you both because obviously this is a very important council and those of us in town who attended some of the concerts that they had during the summertime, you know, they were phenomenal artists that were brought in, but I definitely think that the council needed extra help. So the fact that both of you are willing to sacrifice your own personal time to, to help out um, this board, as you said, it's, it's really important. It's a good thing. It's cool. Um, I definitely appreciate it. So thank you both for volunteering. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Wendy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Again, I'd just like to echo Jesse's sentiments. Thank you both for stepping up. Um, it's a great council, but you know, I think with a, a little, little bit more power behind the scenes, we could bring even more to the community. So thank you so much. And Jonathan. Yeah, same here. I really appreciate you coming forward and volunteering and, and driving forward a very important council for the town. And I think it, it promotes participation for the residents and opportunities for you know, people to, to commingle with each other throughout town. So I think it was great. Yeah. And I agree with all my colleagues, and I thank you for your uh, volunteer service. And with that said, we have a motion. Yep. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Norma Baker and Christine Bovey's? Bovey. Bovey to the Cultural Council for three-year terms. Second. And motion been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Next would be a planning board appointment. Jim? 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, obviously, with the election of our illustrious Jonathan Anderson to the Board of Selectmen, we mm -hmm. now have a vacancy on the planning board. Um, I am recommending that the board promote Wally Baker from the alternate position to a full member uh, with a term to expire in May of 2019. Thank you. And open up for discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, you know, I don't really know what to say about Wally. Um, Wally is a, a, he's a phenomenal individual. Mm -hmm. He's a rock star. And, um, you know, he was very excited when he got a chance to serve as an alternate. And I'm sure he's even more excited now being a full member of the board. So um, I, I support this promotion wholeheartedly. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Wendy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, just to echo Jesse's sentiments, I think Wally will be a, a great asset. Uh, it certainly has the community demonstration of, of integrity to the town and experience. So I think he'd, he'd be a great fit. And welcome you to the board at the same time. Yeah. Jonathan. Yes, I agree. I mean, I've been working with Wally for the last couple of years as he's been an alternate. Um, he comes to every meeting. He is very dedicated and he is involved in many aspects of not just in the planning board, but he's been involved um, on many issues and he's just a really stand up person and I'm excited that he has this opportunity to be a full member. And I, I agree with everyone, and Wally, everything that's been said, he's certainly professional and honesty, and we're glad to have him, and he's excited about it. And that's a good thing about having alternates, Jim, that someone can move up, and we're confident, and the board has seen him grow a little yeah. bit, and uh, it's just a plus for that board. Yeah. So we have a motion? Yes, also. sir. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to appoint Wally Baker from alternate member to a full voting member on the planning board with a term to expire May 2019. Second. The motion remains seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 4 0. Great. And now would be to approve and sign the November election warrant. Jim? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, again, this is just the normal protocol uh, this time of year, especially during election year. Um, the uh, the November uh, warrant uh, needs the board you know, the board needs to sign that and we post it at the uh, lo the usual locations throughout town. Mm -hmm. okay, thank you, uh, Jesse. Yeah, my only hope is that with November coming, that the public's paying attention and we have a good turnout because obviously elections matter. Any election matters. So you know, it, it costs a lot of time and energy um, from the, the clerk's office to all the volunteers, the poll workers, and so forth. So again, hopefully that the town responds well and you know hits the polls and votes. Yeah. Wendy, uh, yeah, I just would really like to commend the uh, clerk's office. I know they've been working mm -hmm. qu quite a bit harder than they even normally do to get ready for this election. So you know, respect their time and effort and please show up at the polls. I, I agree with all of that. I'm sorry, Jonathan. Um, you know, I agree. I mean, this is the third election coming up in the last few months. It's been yeah. a lot of work and um, I think it's really important that people get out and vote and there's a lot of important issues that have caught a lot of people's attention. So I really hope that people take advantage of it. Okay. Thank you. Um, I also agree and it'd be nice to Lot, it's going to have a lot of energy in this election, so I look forward to it. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve and sign the November 2018 election warrant. Motion Second. remains seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes 4-0. And next on the agenda would be the fire department update, and tonight we have um, Chief Matt Belsito. And Jim? Mr. Chairman, don't just say a few words. Um, you know, Matt is here, obviously, uh, because I asked him to be here. But it, the bigger picture is that the Board of Selectmen uh, had this discussion over the summer, and um, the board requested that they, they'd like to see the, the um, department heads on a regular basis. Uh, I think the first round of time we did that a couple years ago was very helpful, not only to this board, but also to the public that was watching. Um, they get to see a little bit here from the department head has a little bit about the insight of what's going on with their individual departments. Um, Matt's done a great job as chief, as we all know. Um, he's done a nice job changing the culture that currently exists uh, through the promotion process. Um, and, and we have talked a lot uh, 
over the last six, eight months about moving his offices eventually to the former police department up here at the, the entrance to town hall, uh, in large part because it will allow us to keep the backup communications equipment safe and secure, um, and it also provides an additional you know, benefit because the, the, his current offices are, are not fully handicap accessible, so this will make his office completely handicap accessible, the public easier uh, access to the fire department to buy building permits or, or burning permits and other types of permits. So, um, so I, I think he's doing a great job, but I want the board to hear from him and, and talk about your ideas. Yeah. All right. Yours, Matt. Good evening. I'd like to welcome Wendy and, and Jonathan to the board. Uh, I know you don't know a lot about me. <coughs> and as the manager said, I'm here to give the board an update of the fire department. Just to give, give you a little bit about me because you two are new to the board. <coughs> I've been chief of the department over six years now, and it has been extremely adventurous and gratifying to me personally. Just briefly, I will quick quickly review my career for the new members to the board that may not know much about me and my career in the fire service. I began my career in September of 1985 with the Melbury Fire Department. In 1991, I was promoted to lieutenant within headquarters company. In September of 2001, I was promoted to assistant fire chief. Then in 2007, I was promoted to the chief of the department. I have seen many, many incidents over my continuing 33 plus year career. Some very rewarding, others not so much. I have attended thousands of hours of organized trainings over these years and responded to thousands of emergencies over these years. Some of these emergencies I have responded to and worked tirelessly at over the years are some of the most notable incidents in Central Mass. The following in incidents are just to name a few that you might remember. The Northbridge Furniture Fire in Worcester Mass, 1986. The Oxford Lumber Yard Fire in 1991. Worcester State Hospital Fire in 1991 as well. Fishville Mill Fire in 1999. Worcester Cold Storage Fire, 1999, and the Burnout Mill Fire in Uxbridge in 2007 are a few. As you can see, I've been in the fire service a very long time, and I'm honored to serve as the chief of this great department that is made up of four full-timers, including myself, and 34 on-call members. <coughs> Functions of the F Sutton Fire Department. As mentioned above, the department is made up of mostly on-call firefighters with the exception of myself, Captain Jeff Briggs, Lieutenant Robin Jesser, and Firefighter Rene Roy. The four full-timers work a schedule that is 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through fri Friday. Additionally, we are on-call like the rest of the members 24-7 year-round. I would be extremely remiss if I didn't point out that the on-call members do this at little compensation. For them, as well as us, it is more for the passion and love for the job. The membership realizes that at any given time, our services will be called upon in the event of an emergencies. Emergencies that could include, but are, not cer but are certainly not limited to structure fires, car fires, chimney fires, extrication, technical rescues, brush fires, first responders, hazmat, and good intent calls. We do this without hesitation, leaving our families on holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, children's activities, etc. We also realize there are no scheduled shift changes within the Sutton Fire Department, no relief shifts coming in. No matter how tired, how cold we are, we are it until the emergency is mitigated. I am also proud to inform you that there is currently 14 EMTs within the department that also run along with Sutton ALS to Priority 2 and Priority 1 calls. All Sutton Fire Department EMTs are trained in the use and carry Narcan and EpiPens in, in the event of an overdose, overdose or an allergic reaction. Additionally, each and every EMT carries a first in bag which contains the necessary equipment to keep someone alive. The members are notified of an emergency through the pager that each and every, one, every member carries on them 24-7. Each and every member of the department accomplishes this with professionalism, pride, dedication, thoughtfulness, compassion, preservation, intenseness, and most of all, heart. Although we only have four full-time as we handle 98% of the calls during the daytime hours without toning out additional people or calling in mutual aid. 
The full-timers also perform all code and resale inspections, which we are averaging approximately eight a week. The department sold a, to sold a total of 417 residential burning permits and 10 agricultural burning permits throughout the year. Fire prevention is ongoing continuously throughout the course of the year. The Fire Prevention Education and Senior Safe Program is headed by Lieutenant Robin Dresser and Lieutenant Jeff Wilson. We continue to assist all departments in whatever they need, sometimes going well outside the scope of a firefighter's role. The Fire Department's Facebook is striving with popularity not only with the citizens of the town of Sutton, but everyone that is on social media. I would like to thank Lieutenant Mike Harris for doing a tremendous job keeping and maintaining a watchful eye on the department's Facebook page. The fire department as a whole takes part in any and all community events, whether that is helping an organization out or participating in the event itself. This past February, we held two different classes of CPR for the members and their families of the Delhi General Post with the help of MedStar Ambulance. This brought to light to me the need for Sutton Fire Department to have the qualifications to teach classes and life-saving skills to the citizens of the town of Sutton. I reached out to Captain Jeff Briggs and Firefighter Renee Roy to see if they would be interested in getting certified as CPA, CPR instructors, and they immediately replied, absolutely, Chief, which they are in the process of finishing up the certification process now. We, the Sutton Fire Department, anticipate that we will have our first CPR class available to the townspeople just after the first of the year. I'm extremely proud to get this community service program up and available to the townspeople in early 2019. The department is continuously writing and seeking out grant funding to try and offset the cost of equipment and training. Although up to this point we have been unsuccessful in securing a grant, I am personally disappointed about that. However, that being stated, that does not in any way shape or form or form deter me from constantly trying. At this time, I would like to state to the board how well all the different departments unite in the area of interdepartmental functionality. I have quite a number of years in the fire service and have, ob ha and have observed a lot of communities in my time, and my, thought, and my true thought on this topic is that Sutton nailed it. The department also has a mentoring program known as the Sutton Fire Department Explorer Post. This program is headed by Captain Jeff Briggs, as well as additional firefighters as advisors. The Explorer Post currently has nine members that range in age from 14 to 18. This group of fine young men and women give a tremendous amount of time and effort to the department as well as to the community. Annually, annually they help out in various capacities at community events such as Waters Farm Days and a Chain of Lights. I applaud Captain Briggs and his staff for a job well done. We currently do not have any recruits in the Carl Volunteer Fire Academy. However, I would just like to inform the board of the commitment new recruits have to commit to. They must go through a grueling 21-week fire academy that consists of every Monday and Wednesday night from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. and every Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. When all is said and done, the recruit has put in 294-plus man hours for little or no compensation. They also must successfully pass Firefighter 1, Firefighter 2, which is a standardized test at the state level to secure a paid position on the call member roster of the Sutton Fire Department. Sutton Fire is within Massachusetts Fire District 7, which encompasses 25 towns in the city of Worcester. I am honored to serve as a chairman as, as well as being on the executive board of directors of Fire District 7. One of the many great functions the district is capable of providing to all departments within the district is specialized resources and teams. This is vastly accomplished by securing money through Homeland Security for equipment and training. For example, within the district we have specialized team, a specialized team trained in technical rescue. Te technical rescue includes high angle rope rescue, confined space rescue, trench rescue, structural collapse rescue, swift water rescue, large animal rescue, and dive rescue. There is no one department that could possibly afford to train and have the necessary equipment to provide this level of rescue, including the city of Worcester. I am extremely proud to inform you that Sutton Fire has five members trained in all of the above mentioned areas and are certified on the state level as technical rescue specialists. To achieve this level of 
To achieve, to achieve this level, each and every one of them had to put in 360 hours of additional elite training. They must also continue to train throughout the year to keep their skill set up. Those members are the following. Captain Jeff Briggs, Lieutenant Robin Dresser, Lieutenant Tom Briggs, Firefighter Ethan McMahon, and Firefighter Adam McMahon. I also serve as chairman of the District 7 Technical Rescue Team, uh, as well as on a state level of techn technical rescue specialists on the executive board of directors appointed by the governor and state fire marshal. District 7 also provides specialized equipment such as foam trailers, special operation communication operations, and a wide variety of training opportunities that communities by themselves could not be able to afford due to budget restrictions. The district also provides mutual aid from within as well as mutual aid to any fire district in the Commonwealth. This was quite evident re just recently when Sutton Fire as well as many other local fire departments were dispatched to Lawrence for the gas emergency. I'd like to go over a few, uh, a few of the accomplishments that uh, the Sutton Fire Department had just recently. I have recently done four promotions within the department in the ranks of District Chief and Captain. Promoted to District Chief are, are the following, District Chief Sean Courtney and District Chief Jake Nudemacher. Promoted to Captain, Captain Neil Ford and Captain Jeff Briggs. Those promotions were all well deserved. The initial process has begun for the promotion of two lieutenants, one position out of Station 3 and one position out of Station 1. Currently, there are four members from each respective station that are pursuing the lieutenant's position within their station. I wish them the best of luck. The entire department is trained to all state-level mandatory trainings, which include CPR, HAZMAP, first responder, and CCR. Trust me, this endeavor is no easy task, and I'm very proud of each and every member for accomplishing this. We have also been directly involved in the ongoing major project, projects in town, that have taken countless man hours to ensure that all safety measures are in place for the public, employees, as well as the first responding personnel. I can assure you no corners were ever cut and every safety precaution is in place and tested. The projects are the following. Galaxy Pass, with the exception of the building commissioner, John Kuchin, no one has spent more time and effort on this project as it continues to advance towards completion. We continue to make sure every little detail is paid close attention to. Prime Metals, although a welcome addition to town, it certainly will be no easy task making sure everything is in place to ensure the safety of the employees and the first responders due to the fact of the size and complexity of the structure. Prime Metals certainly is an exciting step forward in a new growth for the town of Sutton, and we welcome them with open arms and we look, and we look forward to working side by side with John Kucha to have a beautiful and safe building. The department is well on its way in achieving all the mandatory testing to certify our equipment, which will take countless hours to complete. Shortly, we will be testing all six of our pumps. This month, we will be testing all of our hose, which is approximately 21,000 feet of various size hoses. In November, we will have all of our ground ladders and aerial ladder tested and certified. In September, we had our face pieces as well as our self-contained breathing apparatus tested and certified. All four of these pieces of equipment must be tested yearly by a licensed certified test center to ensure the safety of our firefighters. On the trainings, the department conducted a total of 31 trainings so far this year for total combined man hours of 1,820. These trainings included, but were not limited to, fire suppression, attack, attack and supply, foam training, bag operations, drafting, drafting operations, relay pumping, ice rescue training, water rescue training, auto extrication, search and rescue. I not only prepare the training sch schedule, I also attend each and every training session, as I believe you should lead by example. If I expect the members to attend, then I should as well. We currently are hoping to do a live burn this year as well at either the Auburn or Worcester training facility. Then we had to, had to complete the state mandated trainings. They are as follow. For the fire department EMT, 40 hours times 17 of them equals 680 hours. First responder training, which is currently in the process of going on, 
24 members, 24 hours by 24 members, which is 576 hours. CPR, three hours times 38 members, 114 hours. Hazmat, 24 hours times 38, 912 hours. It's an additional total of 2,282 hours. So, so far, emergency 911 calls for 2018. This is in, this mutual aid request 34, that's correct. EMS calls, as when I wrote this, was 199. That has gone up by at least 10. Fire calls were 192, and that has gone up as well because this was last week, so that went up by at least five. So total 911 calls are 425 plus so far for the year. At this point in time, we are currently at 425 911 plus calls, which we are heading to go over that number of runs as we had a total of 485 for 2017. We will shatter that. Sun Fire Department equipment and apparatus. We, we have three engines, two tankers, one ladder, one rescue, two brush trucks, three ATVs, two boats, one special ops, one hazmat trailer, one technical rescue trailer, one mobile ventilation unit, and two administration vehicles. The department's overall budget for FY 2018 is 488200 4, $400,088,261. The ongoing projects that we have going on currently. I'm currently wrapping up a project assigned to me by the town manager on the ongoing opiate crisis and hope to have the final document submitted to him shortly, just waiting on a few odds and ends from a couple of department heads. I just finished completing an update to the town of Sutton FEMA portal. Also on our plate, if you are not aware, the governor has signed a bill making the Commonwealth and OSHA state commencing in February 2019. This may or may not impact the fire department immediately, but has a potential to bring substantial financial implications to the department. I will most certainly keep the manager up to date on this. I would, uh, I would also like to take this opportunity to remind the board Mr. Smith, the Finance Committee, and the citizens of the town of Sutton, if they are watching from home, that I, on behalf of the department, will be asking for your continued support at the May 2019 town meeting for the replacement of Engine 3, which is now 31 years old and has outlived its useful life. I, as well as the membership of this, of this great department, hope to have your ongoing support. We realize that replacing apparatus is a costly endeavor for the town, However, we want to ensure not only you as the board, but each and every taxpayer of this town that these fire trucks are a 25 to 30 year investment in our specialized pieces of equipment. The Sutton Fire Department, as with all fire departments, historically take extreme pride in their equipment. We take exceptional care of this equipment because of the pure fact that we know our lives, as well as the lives of our fellow brothers and sisters, depend on it. Hopefully, I am thanking you in advance for your support on this much-needed apparatus replacement. If all goes according to the plan, I have been informed that the fire department will be taking over the police department space when it becomes available upon their move. This will allow many things to happen. It will allow handicap access to the department, which will allow easy access for all the public to obtain the various permits that they may need in the course of the day. Also, it will allow the town to keep in a secured space a backup dispatch console that is much, much needed in the event the primary dispatch console goes down or the event that the town has multiple incidents going on at, the, at once or just the fact that the primary dispatch is getting overwhelmed and needs some backup. To have a, back, to have a backup dispatch console in place is not uncommon practice. The towns of Millbury, Oxford, Grafton, and Northridge all have remote backup dispatch consoles off-site from their primary consoles. How however, you must guarantee a safe and secure area for the console and access by public safety personnel only, which by the fire department moving into this space will guarantee that. The move will also temporarily provide the department for at least years to come additional space that is much, much needed. I, as well as the members, appreciate the support of the town manager as well as you, the board, on this request. Thank you. 
In closing, I would respectfully ask that you as a Board of Selectmen, as well as the townspeople, that when you see a Sutton firefighter, you thank them for their extraordinary service to the community. Trust me, that would mean the world to them. We as a department are a rock solid team of firefighters, <coughs> and we go, to the, we go by the model, there is no I in team. As you can see in this brief pr presentation, things have changed dramatically in the fire service. Even, a even in a predominantly called department, there are mandatory rules and regulations, as well as a mandatory trainings the members must obtain to be a member. The days of showing up and jumping on a truck uh, and going to a car are long gone. It is now a, it is now a very time-consuming commitment one must make to be a member of the fire department, and this is the real deal. Fire knows no difference between a volunteer, a call member, or a full-timer. Every member must be trained to the same standard level. I am honored to be the chief and serve you and all the citizens of this great community. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to keep Impressive. it. Impressive. Yeah, that was short. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Matt, uh, before you leave, I want to open it up to the board here. Jesse? Chief, good evening. Hi. You know, th there's a lot of things that I could say to you, but I know you well enough to know. You know what I'm thinking right now, but all good, good things, that's for sure. But just so that way the, the, the public's clear on some things, I just want you to repeat some of the numbers, if you could, for me. What's the requirement to become a volunteer before they even take the test? How many hours? 294 plus. 294 plus. How many hours does it take once they become a volunteer annually through the department, individually? A couple thousand hours of training each year. State mandates? Uh, probably about 400 hours of state mandates. But, but we mandate. Right. I mean, Matt yeah. mandates it as chief. He wants the department training every Monday night and training on all different sorts of situations. Oh, if anyone's driven around town on Monday nights, either they're coming through the center, they're down in Wilkes, they're going in front of some of the businesses, they're going in some of the fields, they, I can guarantee you, they're gonna see members of the department out there training live, in person, with all types of contingencies. Heck, if I remember, and I'm pretty sure I do remember pretty well, Chief, that that goes so far as to even throw selectmen into ice cold lakes. Yeah. Yep, yep. So, uh, on yeah. On a Sunday morning. On a Sunday, early We're Sunday rescued. morning. I was rescued, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> thankfully, it definitely was. Um, you know, as you said, Matt, you know, if, if you ever run across somebody in town who's a member of the fire department, you know, they look the part because they believe in it. They buy into it. Um, there's no I in team, but for them, it's not about being part of a team. It's about being part of a family. And, and Chief, that's your family. Oh, you, know, you better believe it. Each and every one of them knows I love them to death. And, and I think it's mutual. That's for sure. Um, I just see the way when I talk to them and ask, you know, just kind of check in. It's it always, oh, chief is this and chief and chief. It's always positive. It's always admiration. So, again, that, that's reflective of you. Um, you are definitely a phenomenal leader. And I know from my perspective, we are blessed that, you know, Jim and, and the board at the time was able to lure you over into Sutton because we're definitely better off for it. <clears throat> the other question that I have for you, and it, and it would be, I guess, my inner Paul Maynard, you know, want to come out. And, and I know he asked you this the last time you were here. And I, figure, <laughs> and I figured I'd ask you anyways. If money was no question, what would be the one thing that you think would be a good addition to help your team in its efforts? Right now, today? Right now, today. New fire headquarters. Why? Because we, we don't, when we do full department trainings, we, we do have the great luxury we partner up with the school. The school, school does give me anything that I want. And I call them because when we do, we got, uh, when we do a full department, it's 38 plus people. And we don't have a location to train, do a classroom training with 38 people um, if we don't go to the school. So this isn't, this isn't something that you just wish. This is a legitimate need because to support the size of your department? Uh, well, yeah, I, I, and just, just so you're aware, and, and Mr. Smith knows, I mean, on my, on my five-year capital, we have a, um, I think it's five years from now, correct me if I'm wrong, we, we, I put a study on there to do our fire department assessment needs well, we're five years from now. We're definitely a growing town. 
and I don't think that would be out of the question. And, and I know from my perspective, not only will I support your the request in the spring for the new vehicle, I'll support that proposal as well. well thank you. Thank and you, I just want to, I'd be remiss, and the, the opiate project that we're working on, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a heck of a task, and uh, uh, Renee Roy, Firefighter Renee Roy, really, really helped me out um, doing the fire department end of it, and uh, all the department heads are coming together. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's no easy, all, all the department heads were, they want some really deep information. So we're, we're wrapping that up, though. We're on it. I know you are. And just okay. to answer your question, Jess, uh, the mandatory from the state of EMTs have to do 48, 40 hours a year piece. First responder, 24 hours. CPR's three hours a piece. Hazmat is 24. That's all mandatory stuff. If you add that up for every member, that's 2,282 hours. That's on top of their, if they're on call, their full-time jobs. Oh, yeah. Their time with their that's families. That's just the mandatory trainings. So that's not on top of what, as, as Mr. Smith said, that's not on top of what, what I, you know, what I kind of make a mandatory do. And I know that if I ever was to make a call, I know I would want your team coming to my house. We're there 24-7. There you are. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, John. Thank you, Jesse. Wendy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, wow. Uh, great presentation, and obviously you have an incredibly auspicious career, and we actually know more about you than you probably think we do. Um, I remember working with you on the, the new school project. Yeah. And I can that say was a rush, huh? uh, occasionally, to my chagrin, you were incredibly dedicated to the absolute <laughs> statutory requirements and really just looking to the future of the building along with John Kucher to make sure it was safe. So I can assure the community that nothing went overlooked oh. time after time after uh, time. I'll echo that. I'll um, back you 180% on that statement. Absolutely. And as someone who grew up in a town with a uh, primarily volunteer fire department, uh, I love the community outreach that you guys do, whether it's the Facebook page, whether it was your recent you know, opportunity for kids to come crawl through the trucks and, you know, meet the department members, uh, the potential of offering the CPR classes to the community. I, 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 that's, those are all just so phenomenal. And I have actually had to call on the department to come when I had a carbon monoxide issue in my home. And I was overwhelmed by, number one, the number of people and apparatus that showed up and how efficient everyone was and calming and really quite professional. So the hours, the hundreds of hours of work that you're putting in are readily apparent. And I just, uh, you know, as a member of the community, I just want to thank you as well as from the board. So well, thank, thank you, you so Wendy. much. It's like I said, uh, um, there's no I in team. I mean, we all go to work and uh, we, uh, we, all, we, ma we all make each other shine. We push each other, we push each other to, a, to a higher limit. Well, it's very I, I can't do that without them, and they can't do, you know, I'd like to think they can't do it without me. Well, I feel safer for it, so thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Jonathan. Chief Belsito, I really appreciate, you know, your report and uh, your dedication to the town. And I was particularly blown away just with the data around the amount of training. I obviously I know there's a lot of training, but I didn't realize how much <coughs> is required, and I think the average person in town probably doesn't have any idea as well and I think it's the dedication and you know being that the majority of people are on call um, you know that's 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 tremendous dedication and uh, passion uh, to serve and also serve each other as well and it's just in my experiences as I you know see the firefighters around town doing outreach and all that you can see that that kind of brotherhood and the, you know that that family and how important they are to each other and I think um, your leadership and um, the amount of dedication that's required, you know, almost, you know, just creates that atmosphere. And uh, I really appreciate the um, the outreach that you do, and uh, you know, and the engagements that you try to get in the community, just educate them and get them interested in, in kind of public safety and in the work that you do. So, thank you very much. I appreciate that, and, and again, I'll, it's a team effort, and. Uh, and I, and I like to think, I don't think, I know we're a pretty good team. Thank you. Thank you. 
Well, Matt, um, you're unbelievable. <laughs> and uh, we are so happy to have you. Oh, I, I mean, I still live and breathe it. I still, <clears throat> it's 24-7, and I love it. I love it. You know, I, I leave in the morning. My wife sees me smiling. I, can, I mean, I, I, I love what I do. And all the different programs. But within the last month, I think in one week, you had two opioid crisis situations. Correct. And uh, my question would be, if you knew, uh, knock in, shot administered to the people in need, what are the, wh how much does this shot cost? And what are the replacement costs for it? Um, I'm I'm not really sure. It's it's knock-in is is minimal, okay. um, and it's the epi that's that's yeah. expensive. Yeah. That's through the roof, as you've been probably seen on the news. Yeah, eight hundred. Um, so yeah. we 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 just recently trained all the EMTs to be able to draw off a vial, um, and we got signed off by uh, Med Control, uh, Doctor Doctor. Uh, uh, Rastusha is our medical control director out of UMass, and uh, we, I if need be, we can draw off a vial. We still got uh, the EpiPens, uh, but to replace an EpiPen is six hundred dollars, as opposed to be uh, buying a vial and hypodermic needle, which I'm, I'm not sure I'm too keen on. I, I haven't made up my f my mind totally on that, but uh, one way or the other, we'll still be carrying Epi. Um, whether it's through the EpiPen or whether it's through a vial. Well, uh, for myself as chairman and with all my colleagues here, we do appreciate not only your efforts, but like you said in your speech, you lead by example, and it's very true for what you do with all your men. And you can tell the excitement with everyone you have there. Um, there's people waiting to get in, <laughs> you know, no honored volunteers and everything. So you take a lot of pride there. And you're one of several departments, uh, the police department, the fire department, the highway department, uh, all our department heads, all these people do such a good job uh, under the leadership of Jim, who uh, is also a rock in our community. So I thank you for all your services. You know, like I said, and as far as into the inter department, um, and I'm not just saying this, I, you, you got... You, Mr. Chairman, you've known me all, all a long time. I wouldn't just say, son. In the, in the departmental-wise, we're rock, we're rock stars. Yeah. Um, we make it happen. Yeah, you can see that. It's so positive with you and the police chief and, and everything. You know, we have fun doing it, too. You know, so, <laughs> I mean, that, that, that's, a real, that's a real plus and very professional. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. All right. Good job, Matt. Thanks. Next would be the town and manager's update, Jim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the town manager's evaluation, uh, you, you should have received the email, uh, good, uh, last week. Um, it's a little late. I think we kind of forgot with the one meeting in September and so forth, so we got a little bit behind. Um, our plan is to have that evaluation on uh, Tuesday, October 30th, if that's okay with the board. Um, Marion's Camp annual cookout will take place Saturday, October 20th uh, from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. The rain date is Sunday the 21st. Uh, the rehab of Garden Lodge is wrapping up. Should be complete in early November. They have run into a few issues, but we've been working through them. Uh, again, uh, the chief mentioned John Kucher. John Kucher's been huge on that project. He is, uh, he's actually uh, kind of pseudo contractor at some point in time I won't go into detail but he's uh, he's just terrific I mean he's um, he's making sure it happens um, over 55 uh, proposed developments so there is a proposal that came before us so oh, maybe a couple weeks ago uh, WDA WDA design group is starting uh, on uh, planning on constructing uh, in the spring an over 55 development to the west side of 146 or on Armsby Road. Uh, there was, you may recall, a previous development at that site about 11 years ago. It may have been part of John LeClaire before he ran into some issues. But um, so this new development, Randy Waterman is the developer. Um, 
This development has 110 to 115 units in total, both on the, the north side and south side of Armsby Road. Um, they, are, they plan on submitting the planning package, special permit package to the planning board, and they'll continue to work through site plan and conservation commission, all the, the board issues throughout the winter with the thought of hope of construction in the springtime. Uh, so it's, it's really uh, uh, exciting to have that. It's really another housing option for those that looking to downsize. Um, and I may be one of those in a, a, a handful of years. Uh, but um, so it, 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 it's interesting, uh, but I just want to let the board know what's going on. Uh, town golf tournament uh, was uh, f uh, held on Friday, October 5th at the Clearview Golf Course. Uh, the winning group was the old forefathers group, the original, uh, Dave LaValle, Carla Capoli, Bob Recor, and a new golfer, Andy Andrew Lavoy. Uh, and just over $2,200 was raised for the food pantry. And thank you for all the board members that contributed. Um, that, was, that was a fun day, and uh, we appreciate that. Now, Clearview may not be an option next year, um, as right now Millbury is looking to uh, make a decision as a town whether they exercise the 61A uh, option or not, which they're holding a special town meeting to do that. A uh, reminder, brush chipping day will be on Saturday, October 20th from 8 to noon down at the transfer station. And one other update uh, prior to the next meeting, there will be a grand opening of the Blackstone Heritage Corridor uh, uh, Visitor Center in Worcester. Uh, I had the advantage of uh, touring that site uh, uh, earlier in the day with the chairman. Um, it's just a, it's a beautiful location, and uh, we're really excited about this. Uh, John has been working, uh, the chairman has been working on a, a nice display of uh, badges from police and fire departments through the 14 communities making up the valley and a, a, a great investment in his, his own time uh, and money uh, to get this done. So I, I want to, you know, appreciate John for all his hard work on that. But this will be on uh, Saturday, October 27th. Uh, at the ribbon cutting is from 9 a.m. to uh, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then there's you can walk through the site through the rest of the rest of the morning. So, should be a, an interesting morning. Uh, that's all I have for updates, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, John. Thank you, Jim, for uh, another wonderful update. Sure. Um, obviously, we don't have much in terms of quantity, so um, you know the evaluation is always an exciting time of year. I'm sure. And yeah. And if, you know, well, I, I won't let any uh, spoilers out of the bag. That's right. Um, Marion's camp, progress is always good. I'm sure the the, um, the campfire girls and their families will be very excited yeah. to see the progress. Right. Um, now, on the proposed over 55 development, I, I, I mean, obviously, I, I need to know a little more about this. But um, one question that I would have and I don't know if it can be answered at this stage in the game, but would it definitely be locked into a, a senior type community? Yes. Okay, so it'd be contingent on renting or leasing or purchasing, whatever the units would be? Well, uh, it, they will have to file uh, through the planning board for that particular use, and there are certain conditions and criteria that go into that uh, through the planning board process. Uh, but it, it won't turn out to be uh, just average housing. Uh, it'll it'll be uh, deed restriction deed restricted uh, at the registry of deeds to over 55. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, golf tournament. Well, I'm definitely not a golfer, but I was there, and I guess I golfed, and um, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, I know all the teams out there seem to be laughing and having a good old time. I don't know how much the quality golf happened, but it was nice to see the original winners, who apparently won the first six or seven years oh, yeah. Yeah, in a row, were, yeah. you know, that they were able to retake their crown. So. Sandbaggers. Yeah. <laughs> And um, brush chipping, I'm assuming that um, whoever runs the town site, be it Christine or Pam, will post notice on the, the Sutton site so that way the community will be made aware. They will. Excellent. Thank you very much. I have, sure. I have nothing else. Thank you, Thank Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Jim, will people on Saturday be able to go into the Goddard Lodge, or is it not yet ready? Probably not. Um, you know, it's. I think it's kind of unsafe to go in there. Um, 
but they will be able to see all the progress we've made and uh, knowing that you know with a little bit of work it'll be wrapped up uh, but the landscaping and everything else hasn't been completed so it's difficult to get into the building Understood. Uh, so you know they'll be able to see it from afar so well, I think it's exciting at any rate I'm, I right. can't wait to see what's happened um, I didn't make it in time to play at the golf tournament but I I was able to be there for part of it and uh, certainly everyone seemed to be having one heck of a time mm -hmm. thank you chief for my shirt the, very exciting. <laughs> uh, and I encourage everyone to attend the, the chipping day at the transfer station. It's amazing how many people come out for that. Yeah. Uh, so keep that staff really busy on Saturday. Mm -hmm. you got it. That's all for me, Mr. Chairman. Thank Jim. you. Jonathan. Yes, I'm actually looking forward myself to going to the, the cookout. I think that would be a great experience. It's, a lot. it's been a long time since I've personally been down there. When I was a kid, my yeah. you know the Janellas lived next door, and we were good friends there, so we used to right. scoot over there once in a while. But yeah. now to see it actually being restored and, and really kept up in a really beautiful way, I'm excited to, yeah. to see that. Um, I'm particularly interested in this over 55 development. Uh, I had some conversations with Jen Hager when I was still on the board. Um, did make some suggestions because it is both business owned and um, residential. residential that we may want to encourage some sort of mixed use uh, in that space. I think it's something that we should be looking at, mm -hmm. particularly where it's zoned the way it is. Um, I think that could be a good enhancement to that community and the community as a whole. Um, and yeah, so that's really pretty much what I have right now. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, I have nothing this evening. And. Uh, Stockman's Roundtable, correspondent business topics. Yeah, as always, I do have a few. First and foremost, I'd like to congratulate our new colleague, John Anderson, on his recent victory. And uh, it's wonderful to have your presence here on the board and, and looking forward to having you to my right, at least for the rest of this year. It would be, it's definitely going to be fun. Um, I would like to thank everybody who worked as well as visited Water Farm over Farm Days this past weekend. I mean, obviously, weather conditions, well, you know, we live in New England, and it wouldn't be Water's Farm Days without a little bit of water, and unfortunately, Mother Nature gave us a bunch. So I, I know the conditions were in the fields were not ideal. I know there was uh, restrictions and issues with parking, but for everyone who slogged in the mud with us, you know, thank you very much. I, I know there was a lot of fun. There was a lot of smiling faces, and uh, it's always a good time to be had. So um, thank you again for supporting this wonderful annual tradition. Fire safety night, as was mentioned by Wendy. Chief, superb. I had a chance to attend. There was a lot of kiddos and families just enjoying their opportunity to see the trucks, to go in in that smoke room that, that you had over on the common. Oh, that was cool. I wanted to hang out with the kids. Um, definitely a nice touch, that's for sure. Thank you for hosting that. And uh, last but not least, I would like to do my um, you know, regular update list from the food pantry. Um, I would like to stress that I did speak to Michelle and the food pantry is in desperate need of toiletries in particular. So even though it may sound redundant, she once again stressed the need for shampoo, hand soap, tissues, deodorants for both men and women, dish soap, laundry soap, toilet paper, paper towels. But also I would ask the community to keep in mind that we're getting closer to Thanksgiving. So as you're doing your food shopping runs and if you are uh, one of those who help out with the food pantry, remember Thanksgiving's coming, so start thinking like pie crusts and fillings and puddings and things like that. I'm sure Michelle would definitely be appreciative. Thank you, Thank Mr. Chairman. Wendy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just uh, taking off sort of from Waters Farms, it was damp but enjoyable. Um, so that's a great autumn tradition, and even though we balk at the idea of winter coming, it is. And with that um, is going to be the chain of, chain of lights. And I just wanted to put out there that the new police station will be a stop um, on one of the trolley stops. Uh, the building will not be accessible for tours at that point, uh, but the um, Chief Toll and his, his crew are putting together some surprises for the town, particularly the kiddos. So I just wanted to put that out there. I, we're, we're thinking maybe trolley three, but not quite sure yet. Um, but I do know that the Chain of Lights Committee has been working incredibly hard and could use some additional volunteers. So if anyone in the community is interested in helping out, there is an infinite amount of things that could they could use assistance with. So please step up. 
And that's all I have this evening. Okay. Thank you, and I have none. Jonathan. Oh, Jonathan. Sorry. I would just like to, um, just to say that I'm excited to be to be joining the the board of selectmen mm -hmm. and uh, to be you know working as a colleague with with all of you and to serve continue to serve the town. I'm very excited, uh, you know, to continue to learn and broaden my knowledge of the things that are going on and um, and help uh, promote and, and continue to help the town grow in a, in a way that's uh, beneficial for everyone. So mm -hmm. looking forward to and excited to be here. Okay, welcome. Thank you. We're glad to have you aboard, Jonathan. Yeah. Absolutely. And I have nothing. Then, Mr. Chairman, if it would be so kind, if I could uh, make a motion to adjourn. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 4-0.